And so they came to the sword arboreal precipice of the unpassable forest. The dragon rose at it with a rattle of wings. Many a farmer near the edge of the world saw him up there where yet the twilight lingered, a faint, black, wavering line, and mistaking him for a row of geese going inland from the ocean, went into their houses cheerfully rubbing their hands and saying that winter was coming and that we should soon have snow. Soon even there the twilight faded away, and when they descended at the edge of the world it was night and the moon was shining. Ocean, the ancient river, narrow and shallow there, flowed by and made no murmur. Whether the jubilants banqueted or whether they watched by the door, they also made no murmur. And Aldric dismounted and took his armor off, and saying one prayer to his lady, swam with his pickaxe. He did not part from his sword, for fear that he meet with a giblin. Landed the other side, he began to work at once, and all went well with him. Nothing put out its head from any window, and all were lighted so that nothing within could see him in the dark. The blows of his pickaxe were dull in the deep walls. All night he worked. No sound came to molest him, and at dawn the last rock swirled and tumbled inwards and the river poured in after. Then Aldrich took his stone and went to the bottom step and hurled the stone at the door. He heard the echoes roll into the tower. Then he ran back and dived through the hole in the wall. He was in the emerald cellar. There was no light in the lofty vault above him, but diving through twenty feet of water he felt the floor all rough with emeralds and open coffers full of them. By a faint ray of the moon, he saw that the water was green with them, and easily feeling a satchel, he rose again to the surface, and there were the jailblins waist deep in the water, with torches in their hands, and, without saying a word or even smiling, they neatly hanged him on the outer wall. And the tale is one of those that have not a happy ending. <laughs>